but wait, there's more. Yeah, you get a like a like a secret special ending thing. I don't know. It's uh, similar to the beginning of the game here. What's up, Tracy? Yeah, it is an annoying knock. Let's see if they uh, have the uh, cracked bat there. Oh, I already opened it. <laughs> and it still has like all your uh, all the stuff you have equipped and everything like that. I think that's hilarious. You even have the money that we had. <laughs> awesome. I don't know. Ugh. Alright, Porky. Yeah, another era? Whatever, buddy. Oh, hey. It's Picky. What's up, man? Really? Uh, okay. Cool. Huh. Spankity, spankity, spankity. Wow. Who knows? Alright. So, on with my review. Okay, here's the last part of my review, and, uh... Hopefully it gives you an understanding of my opinions on Earthbound in general. Uh, because this game has been discussed a lot in the last 15 years. Uh, and it has been it's gotten a, a following such that even the fans have gotten so loud to where they felt the need to translate Mother 3 uh, when it was never released in the United States. Same with Mother 1. So I, I understand that Earthbound does have a very deep and a very deep cult following which I agree that, yes, Earthbound does deserve that kind of cult following. Uh, one person that I do follow quite a bit is the Happy Video Game Nerd. If anyone doesn't know who the Happy Video Game Nerd is, pretty much he is the most successful, in my opinion, the most successful parody of the Angry Video Game Nerd, James Rolfe. Uh, and, this guy, and the Happy Video Game Nerd's name is uh, Derek Alexander. So, yeah. Really good reviewer, you should check him out. And he did an Earthbound review a couple of years ago, and he just recently did a review of Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, which I'm going to be addressing later on. But in his review of Earthbound, he mentions five reasons why Earthbound sets itself apart from all other RPGs that were made uh, before then. And I'm going to compare this game a lot, also, to Chrono Trigger. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is understand the timing of when all these video when all these games came out. Mystic Quest came out in 1992, and in 1992, a lot of a lot of gamers were still playing their fighting games. They were still playing not Super Turbo because that didn't come out yet. But they're still just getting into the Street Fighter games, Mortal Kombat, uh, and the real popular games on the Super were, I want to say, A Link to the Past, Zelda A Link to the Past, Super Mario World, Act Razor, uh, and other really popular games of the time. And RPGs, just like Earthbound, had a very big cult following. I mean, he, uh, Derek Alexander, the happy video game nerd, points out in his Mystic Quest review that in Nintendo Power, uh, games like Final Fantasy and even the, even the Game Boy Final Fantasy games were on the charts of the, uh, player, of the, uh, reader's favorites, which I do remember that. The exact sales, however, I don't think were as good as some of the really popular games you know the Mario the Street Fighter the Zelda uh, the Mario Kart the F-Zero the Star Foxes all those really big games that generated such a following to where if you didn't own those games you were kind of an outcast I do remember very specifically owning Final Fantasy 2 well which is also Final Fantasy 4 uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, all of the Dragon Quest games, 1 through 4, I had all 4 of them. 
And I remember people like making fun of me for playing those games. So Mystic Quest had to come out and it had it did what it needed to do in my opinion, which is it eased uh you know, those in the United States into the role playing game genre. Those who weren't completely convinced and uh converted such as myself uh would be con would be converted after Mystic Quest came out because check guess what came out after Mystic Quest? Secret of Mana, the the Seventh Saga, which is one of the hardest SNES RPGs of all time in my opinion. And then Final Fantasy VI came out, Final Fantasy III. All of these games came out before Earthbound. This is before nineteen ninety five. And then in June 1995, Earthbound comes out. Instant classic. But it doesn't sell nearly as much as it was uh, sent out to be, as it was advertised to sell. It, it, it did not meet Nintendo's expectations at all. And before I get to what I think is the reason why that is, I want to just address the five things that the Happy Video Game Nerd mentions in his review. The first thing they argues is that it has a modern mid-90s setting. And this is fair. I mean, before Earthbound, you know, RPGs were, you know, set in the Middle Ages and, you know, you, you armed your, your warriors and mages with swords and staves and went and defeated the Dragon King. I mean, like, that's what RPGs were before Earthbound. Nearly all of them. I mean, yeah, except Fantasy Star and others, but those are just small blips on even the RPG radar. No, not a lot of people remember those kind of games. And then, of course, you have the, uh... What do you call it? See, the road, so it's so insignificant, I can't even remember them. Uh, Ogre Battle, and what else? There's another strategy RPG that was fairly popular, but not nearly as popular as Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, but you know what I mean. If you know what game I'm talking about, feel free to post it in the comments. And yeah, before Earthbound came out, that, I mean, you know, RPGs was Middle Ages and Middle Age and Medieval Lore, and that's about it. And then came Earthbound, and then that changed the whole thing. The second thing that the Happy Video Game Nerd says is that, you know, is that the heroes are kids, and that they're very unassuming, and they're very unlikely heroes. And this is where I mention Chrono Trigger, because... That argument is fair, but it's also wrong, because the idea of the silent protagonist and the unassuming hero, that, that, that's that been done way before Earthbound. I mean, that's been done with the Dragon Quest games, to be really specific. I mean, yeah, you know, they were the descendants of the great hero, but, you know, they never had any thoughts, they never had any, like... They didn't, like, think that they were, like, the man. You know what I mean? Like, Dragon Quest Three is a perfect example. Like, yeah, you're some son of some hero, and you have to save the world, and you have nothing to say about it. I mean, that in and of itself is a pretty unassuming character. And then you have Chrono from Chrono Trigger, who is probably the most unassuming hero, because he's just some teenager who, you know, went to some millennial fair and met and met this princess who was disguised as a commoner, and all of a sudden, he's saving the world from Lavos. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And I'm going to go. i come to Chrono Trigger later on. I'm going to come back to it. Third thing that the Happy Video Game mentions that uh, sets Earthbound apart from everything is the uh, concept of, you know, the whole green swirl and one-shotting the enemies. Like, I demonstrated a whole bunch in this LP. That is fair, and that continues to be fair for a long, long time. In fact, it's not until Persona 4 and Mother 3 that we see it again. So, I completely agree with that. 
fourth thing he talks about is the NPC dialogue and how it's like the most creative NPC dialogue that he's ever seen. Just like the heroes being kids, that is also contestable. Because, especially when Final Fantasy VI came out, when Ted Woolsey was doing most of the translating for the Square games, the dialogue in those games are just hilarious and fantastic. I mean, you cannot disagree with that. So, that's contestable. But Earthbound does have a little bit better than most when it comes to NPC dialogue, and it, it is it does make the game that much more interesting. And the fifth thing that the Happy Video Game Nerd talks about is that the story doesn't take itself seriously. This is something I dis disagree with. This is just wrong, because the story doesn't take itself seriously until you get to Summers, and then you get Pooh, and then you fight the Kraken, and then all of a sudden you're, and all of a sudden everything comes together, and one thing I do like about Earthbound's story is that it escalates perfectly. You know, at first you're just like some kid who is, you know, just looking for some sanctuary spots. And you hit that last sanctuary spot and like, oh my god, this is it. This is the final frontier. And then we gotta travel back in time and save the world from Gaigas who is attacking several million years in the past or something like that. So, yeah. The story doesn't take itself seriously, but it does escalate itself to where it does take itself seriously. And finally, to, finally to conclude, I just want to clear a, a couple of things up, okay? First of all, my overall uh, rating of Earthbound. Now, I rate similar to Dark Side Phil, where I'm really honest, and... For example, like a nine out, like there's no such thing as a ten out of ten because a ten out of ten is perfect. So I've never given any game a ten out of ten. Even Final Fantasy IX, which is my favorite video game of all time, that still gets like maybe a nine, maybe a nine out of ten. On, a, on like when everything is considered, like I'll give it like maybe like a nine point one two five or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, so keep that in mind. Uh, also, keep in mind I am comparing Earthbound to several other RPGs that were made around 1995. Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, to be exact. I am actively comparing Earthbound to Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger when I'm making this rating, which is an 8. Earthbound gets an 8 out of 10. It's an excellent game, yes, but I disagree with the fact that it's gameplay is unique. Its gameplay is not unique. Its gameplay is ripped completely off of Dragon Quest. And I remember when I played this game and I was 13 years old, I'm like, holy crap, this is a lot like Dragon Quest 4. You have Ness, who's the man, he knows everything, and can beat the crap out of everything in, in sight, which is like the hero from Dragon Quest 4. Jeff is the guy who can use uh, special weapons, and he's like the warrior who doesn't get any MP or psychic points, you know, Paul is your mage, and Pooh is, like, your red mage, where you can use, like, you know, both black and white magic, <laughs> which is, like, PK healing and PK thunder and stuff like that, so, and that's what really, like, drags this game down. Now, if it had stuff like Final Fantasy VI, where it had, like, customizable ma uh, materia, no, not materia, where it had cu customizable Magisite, or like Chrono Trigger, which had the excellent combat system, which, to this day, I haven't found anything better than the combat system in Chrono Trigger, I'm, I'm letting you know right now. Then, maybe Earthbound would have gotten a 9. But, for what it's worth, Earthbound's an excellent game. I, I suggest you, uh, I don't know, I guess the only way you're going to have to play it is either to find it uh, the cart for sale on eBay, or to illegally download the emu emulator like me. I mean, I do have a, I do have a copy of this game, but uh, but whatever. <laughs> okay, second thing I want to clear up: Why hasn't this been released on Virtual Console? Well, the answer lies in more than a few things. Okay, 
Earthbound spoofs off so many things from pop culture that if it were to ever be released now, 15 years after it was released, the lo- Nintendo would be facing lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. Earthbound spoofs off the Blues Brothers. They spoof off the Beatles. They spoof off... They spoof Salvador Dali, of all people. Salvador Dali in Dali's Clock. That's, you know, that was one of his uh, paintings, I think. Or, or it resembled one of his paintings. So, that's the reason why. And that, yeah, it would be profitable on Virtual Console. But the profits that it would make off of the Virtual Console would not. And I repeat, it would not outdo a lawsuit from uh, Paul McCartney or Dan Aykroyd or uh, those associated with Salvador Dali's uh, work and paintings. So that's why it hasn't been released on Virtual Console. And now, finally, finally the point I want to get to, the final argument I want to make before ending this LP, and that is uh, the happy video game nerds like final word on this game is that, yeah, the debate on why Earthbound was so underrated rages on. And I'm not going to settle this debate and make, like, one clear-cut answer, but I am going to argue that there is a big reason why Earthbound did not sell nearly as many copies as it could have. And it goes back to the timeline. Before 1995, you had Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, you had Secret of Mana, you had Final Fantasy VI, and I don't know what else Square came out with, you had Final Fantasy Legend 3 for the Game Boy, Final Fantasy Legend 2, but simply put, Squaresoft had almost a monopoly on the RPG genre in both Japan, well not in Japan, because that was Enix, but in the United States and Europe. Squaresoft had a monopoly on RPGs. It, if you had an RPG and you were living in Europe or the United States, it was probably made from Square. Maybe it could have been made from Enix. It would have never been released on Nintendo unless you count uh, Zelda and Metroid as RPGs, which I possibly could consider Zelda an RPG. Even Metroid, had they both have RPG elements. But an RPG RPG, like a JRPG, has never been released by Nintendo until Earthbound. Or until Mother 1, to be exact. But I'm talking about in the United States and Europe here. Earthbound comes out in June 1995. When does Chrono Trigger get released? In August of 1995. Therefore, the reason why... Earthbound did not sell as many copies as it could have is because Squaresoft's previous success with Final Fantasy VI and its later success with success with Chrono Trigger which had a way which had much different and in my opinion better gameplay than Earthbound made Chrono Trigger one more attractive to the gamers especially RPGers like myself I remember getting both these games at the same time in 1996, and I remember I remember saying Earthbound is a lot better than or Chrono Trigger is a lot better than Earthbound because Chrono Trigger plays better. That influenced its sales, and Final Fantasy VI's previous success. If Nintendo had made an RPG before Earthbound, like a year before Earthbound, like Chrono Trigger followed up uh, Final Fantasy VI. If Earthbound was a follow-up to like the, uh, like a later Zelda game or something like that, it would have been able to compete with a, with a Chrono Trigger quite well, and it may have sold a lot more copies. So that's my final word on Earthbound. I hope you enjoyed watching this LP as I have making it, or as I had making it, I guess. Uh, I'm sorry the review took so long, but I just wanted to get this stuff off my chest. Uh, yeah, sorry this last episode was like 20 or so minutes long. I did not mean it to be that long, but whatever. Uh, I hope you found my review and my counter-argument to the Happy Video Game Nerd, uh, informative, and I thought you, and I hope that you enjoyed hearing me say what I had to say. Earthbound's a great game. 
Earthbound is awesome fans. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do Mother 3 or Mother 1, uh, because I really, I mean, yeah, my opinions on both of those games, I don't want to go into it, because I don't really care for those two, to be quite honest. But, I don't know, that, 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 that's another day, that's another day. I might, like, review them, but I don't know if I'm going to LP uh, Mother 1 or Mother 3. It's just not going to be, I don't know. I can't stay with it. I can't stay with those two games at all. I get overwhelmed by them. I don't get overwhelmed. I, I haven't gotten overwhelmed by Earthbound ever. So that's why I played it instead of Mother 1 and Mother 3. So there you go. So this concludes Let's Play Earthbound No PK Run. This is the Big Jew telling you to keep being awesome. Peace.